All right, guys, we're back. Dad's Chow. Who's with me? Brother Chow. Brother Chow. All right, we saw Brother Chow use his knives. Now, let's see what he can do with them. All right, Dad's Chow. What I'm going to be cooking for you today is I'm going to be cooking some St. Louis style spare ribs. And so what spare rib means is um, it's where it comes from on the pig. And so a spare rib comes from the belly um, of the animal and the St. Louis style refers to the way that the uh, rib is trimmed. And so um, in order to be a St. Louis uh, style spare rib, the, um, the hard breastplate is trimmed from the top. Then you have more of a symmetrical uh, you know, rib like this. And so before you get to cooking the uh, ribs, what, uh, what you need to do is you need to trim off some of that fat. So, um, and, and this is just a personal preference on how much fat you do trim off, but so I'm gonna give a quick demonstration right here. So first, when you flip it over, um, luckily our butcher today uh, took the membrane off. If, if, if the butcher did not take the membrane off, there would be a thin film here that you would wanna pry um, uh, off with a butter knife and then grab with your finger and then you kind of tear this way. But you know, luckily it's gone, so um, we don't have to demonstrate that for you today. So typically what you'll see is you'll see this flap right here. And so what you wanna do is you wanna take your knife, this is the chef's knife that I demonstrated um, earlier, and you just wanna, you just wanna gently just remove this piece. Like, like this. And don't throw this away, cause this is what we like to call rib candy. We'll flip it back over and then we'll start to get rid of some of the excess fat. So um, typically I would cut, typically you wanna go like this and you just wanna remove some of this fat. But uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to square this up like we would if we were in a uh, barbecue uh, you know, rib competition. So what I like to do is I like to just take this end off right here, looks like hit a little bone, so we'll just go right here. And like I said, like we are not gonna get rid of this, that we are gonna cook that up as well. And then I'm just gonna go, I don't normally do this, but this is a real fatty end right here. And you know, we don't, so I'm just gonna square this up like such. And, um, just get rid of that. Now we have a perfectly symmetrical um, spare rib to work with. All right. All right, chow hounds. So the next step in the rib process is what we want to do is we want to um, season up uh, the ribs. And so um, a good technique, which a lot of the pros use is they like to layer their flavors. And so um, that's going to be a three-step process, right? We're going to go through a couple different layers, but first, before we do that, we want to use a binder. Now this is a little bit, you don't need a lot. So you just go like that, and you just kind of work the mustard in, work the mustard in like that, and then you're gonna flip it over, and we're gonna put just about the same amount, maybe maybe a touch more. We're just gonna work that in, get that all in there. All right, so now, now we want to build our flavor. So what you want to start with first is you want to start with um, your base. And your base is typically um, an SPG or salt, pepper, garlic. So um, unfortunately, I'm not going to give away all my secrets. So I'm going to keep my salt, pepper brand a secret. So first, you, so first you just want to go like this. You want to get a nice coat and then you want to pat that in. Pat that in. Time. So now for the middle seasoning, we're gonna use something more on the savory side. Okay. And 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 what we want to do is we you know we're going for a certain color as well, right? And so there's this reddish brown color that we're going for, and you'll be able to tell uh, by the way these rubs blend together the color that they put out there. All right. Press that in again. And then our third and final rub we're gonna use is more on the sweet side, or as someone likes to say, uh, sweet. So, um, sweet. 
Yeah, so this is more of a honey bait, uh, um, based rub. And um, what I've learned uh, over the past year or two is uh, the honey's for the money. So that's what we're gonna use to top this off. So now we're just gonna take this and we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna repeat the same process. So we're gonna start with our salt, pepper, garlic with the savory dry rub. Back up with the sweet honey based dry rub because what did we learn? That's right, that honey's for the money. All right, cool. I, I think we're all set. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna season up. All right, now that our ribs are seasoned, brother child, what's the next step? What I'm gonna do for today, we're gonna cook these in the oven on about 275 degrees. And I'm expecting these to probably probably take about probably take about four hours. And so so what we're gonna do is like we're gonna put them in the oven like this first. We'll probably let them cook for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Like then we're gonna check them. Then I have a uh, then I have a brother child secret for you. Let's go on and get these bad boys in the oven. Those just barely fit. Okay, well, um, the ribs have been going for about, I don't know, about an hour and a half. Let's see how they're looking. So those those guys are looking pretty good. So now the next step is um, we're going to spritz these with uh, with a little bit of apple juice. Some apple juice in the spray bottle. And this is going to keep them, this is going to keep them nice and, and juicy. We're going to do this probably three times and then they should be ready to wrap. Does this say sugar-free apple juice? Um, I would say use whatever apple juice you have. If you have kids, you can use the, you know, the Mott's Tots. If you, uh, I mean, if you just like apple juice, you can use regular, but that's all you do. But then, then we're gonna put them back in for about another 20 minutes. All right, so we've been cooking the ribs for about two hours and 20 minutes. We've spritzed three times every 20 minutes for an hour. Now we're ready for the next step in the process. We are going to wrap these and we are gonna finish them wrapped up. What I wanna do is this is where you're gonna get the color. This is where you're gonna get some of the flavor or this is where you're gonna get a lot of flavor in the color and this is where we're gonna finish them off. So the first step is you wanna get some light brown sugar and you wanna sprinkle this about the, you know, about the length of the, uh, about the length of the uh, rack of ribs. The next step is you want to take your savory seasoning. You want to get your savory seasoning on there. All right. The next phase, you want to get your honey. Because what did we learn earlier? The honey's for the money. So we're going to sprinkle a little bit of honey here. Not too much, just for a little bit of flavor. And then squeeze butter. It has to be parquet. Don't um, like don't use the imposters. You got to use the parquet. Hashtag parquet. <laughs> so we'll open that up. We'll, we'll give the parquet a nice squeeze here. If it'll ever come out. There we go. All right. All right. So then what you want to do is you want to lay these um, top side down. So we're gonna grab the rib. Flip it over like that. There we go. Now we're gonna do the same thing all over. We're gonna grab some light brown sugar. There's always kids in the background with dad's job. And then we're gonna use a little more of our savory, savory seasoning. That's right, this is a family uh, cook show, so there are kids. And you want to go? Oh, you want to go with the honey? Got a little bit of honey there. For the money. Honey for the money. And you want to do the same thing with the parquet butter. Just one little. All right. So now what I did was I have four sheets of foil here wrapped. So we want to double wrap these. So we'll take the other sheet like this. And then what you want to do, you want to 
fold them over like this. There, like that. Boom. Now that one's set and ready to go. All right, chow hounds. I think the ribs are finally done. They've been cooking for about four hours and ten minutes. Um, so we're going to take them off and we're going to go for the final step. We're going to we're going to put a little sauce on these guys and then we're going to put them back in the oven for about 10 minutes and then we should be good to go. Um, please excuse the sweat right now. Um, I am also known as Uncle Chow and I was playing a mean game of uh, kickball with my nephews, with my niece and nephews out there. So I'm a little sweaty. So let's let's take a look and see what we got here. Oh yeah, this, like these guys, look great. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna drain some of this excess um, juice here. All you do is you take this, go over there, just, just drain it like that. A competition style ribs, ribs like this, um, like I said before, you don't want to fall apart or like you don't want them to fall off the bone. You want just a nice, easy tug off the bone. And so you should be able to handle the ribs whenever you cook them with this method. And look at that. Keep it on there. Oh. These guys look <laughs> really good. These guys look really good. So now all you do is you're just gonna make a little foil nest. You're not gonna recover them when you put them down. Nope. There. Nope, we're just gonna make a little foil nest for them. And then what we're gonna do is we have some barbecue sauce here. It's just, it's just a blend. It's just a blend of a couple of a, of a wife chow's favorite types of barbecue sauce. And we just wanna do just a little light coating. And, and actually I did make a mistake. I should have uh, sauced the bottom part as well um, because that's the first thing that, um, that you taste whenever you take a bite, but that's okay. You know, this isn't a competition. This is just good, uh, just, this is just backyard rib eating. So we're gonna go like that. And then we are just gonna put a little bit here. Like I said, just a nice, light, even coat. You wanna maintain consistency. All right, and that's what we got there. Now we are just going to pop them back in the oven for about for about. 10 so uh, we just sauced the ribs. We've had them in for about ten minutes. Now it's time to cut and eat the ribs. Woo! Woo! I gotta get pumped up for this. All right, there we go. All right, so now, so now we're just. I'm just gonna dust because, like I said before, the one piece I rushed and I. Just left a little bit of the sauce off the back. So now we are gonna cut in and we are going to sample the work that we've done. All right, so what you wanna do when you're cutting the ribs, you wanna cut in the middle of each bone. Cutting like butter. And this, 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 uh, pig was a little, the ribs aren't that straight. There we go. Ooh, that, that was good. We'll go down here because those ribs aren't, oh man. Look at that, just cut straight through. And then the finished product looks like that. And now we'll take a bite. And, and that's what a competition style rib needs to look like. You can bite into it. It pulls off the bone, doesn't fall off. It holds it and it's perfect. All right, well the ribs are done. Now, that's chop privilege. Let's try it out. I guess I can try it. Oh my God, get in there, kid chop. Mm, these are absolutely delicious. This yeah. is neighbor chop, by the way. She I came in to try the ribs. It. Well guys, I think they're good. Hey, mm -hmm. if you like the video, you like what you see here, remember to subscribe. These ribs were amazing. Uh, 
Stay tuned for more. This is Dad's Chop. We're gonna finish this up. Yeah.